Hi, I'm Rachel from Girl Director and welcome to this week's Women's Video Revolution series where I am talking to the amazing Wendy McDougall. She is the most amazing photographer. She's been in the background with Girl Director for a long time. She has worked with so many famous musicians and she's worked on feature films. She's She's been a real pioneer in photography and I can't wait for her to share some wisdom with you on how to make your images better and, and all kinds of things that she can help you to, to create better images that, that you're creating at the moment. So welcome Wendy. How did you get started in your rock and roll photography? I started when I was quite young because I love music and straight from school really I, I started photography. I photographed, I wanted to photograph musicians and fortunately I, I guess I, I feel like I was born under a little lucky star and it kept me going for a good 15 or more years solid just in music and Australian rock and roll, shooting covers and bands and all the promo stuff and uh, I was very fortunate. And those things then led on to um, theatre, film, television. It's kind of a little, if, if you look at look it back on it, it's... Um, kind of makes sense that all those things eventually came together, but it was really music that kicked it all off. So what kind of musicians have you done photographs for? Well, without giving away my age, if you think about Australian music in the early 80s and onwards, uh, a few, most of them that you can think of, I photographed them Australian, and then a few, and, you know, a few that came in from overseas. Um, so that means... Gosh, The Church and Richard Clapton, In Excess, The Angels, all sorts of people, like really all sorts of people. Um, there was only a few of us in the industry at the time, like doing photography full time in that industry. So really we we kind of got the pick of the bunch of what we really liked, the kind of music. That was actually, in fact, that was a kind of lovely thing that if I really liked the music, I would approach the band or happily they would approach me and i get to work with them. So um, you weren't fighting off a hundred other people trying to get the jobs. Wow. And I'm inspired about the um, In Excess, you know, if they were one of my favourite bands. What was it like working with them, you know, taking their photographs? Were they easy to work with? <laughs> well, I think they. I always cite my experiences with them to new young bands because they probably taught me the most of how a band could be and therefore how I could also work with them because of their world experience. Um, it's, yeah, they, you know, when, you, when you're that high, have a profile that's that large around the world, you're obviously going to be photographed and filmed a lot. And the guys often would say to me, you know, we, they didn't actually really like having their photo taken all the time because you can imagine, you know, on press days there's hundreds of different magazines wanting, lining up to photograph them and film them. So they said, look, well, all we did was we learnt to know how well we looked in our photos, remembered our best sides or remembered our looks and didn't care about each other but just gave the, gave the photographer those looks. So we were then, you know, they'd get a quick shot like that and then we're out of there. They spent more time on their own photo sessions when it was something to do with their like their album covers or you know things that actually they wanted to present to the world that said something about them they're willing to spend that time but when it was just press stuff so really for me i just yeah i would tell every other young band don't muck around just learn from experience look at each photo session look at each video how do you look your best bring that to the next session give that it, it's taken and then everyone goes home happy. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So because it, it's not be in front of a camera and the easiest thing to do is to play up, especially when you're with your mates in a band or, you know, if you're a group of a company or something. So um, in that moment, feels fun, feels good, but you don't get your results. So the point is you can still have fun but know, know you look and present that and everyone you know, is, is on a better level to start with and, and then you get amazing results. So, so yes, in excess. Have you got any tips, especially for women, you know, maybe you could just do a couple of strike, a couple of poses or <laughs> what kind of, you know, do you put your shoulder forward? Do you kind of bend for? Is there anything to, to make yourself look slimmer and, and better on camera? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a spin. 
And in fact, I like to, if people are sitting down, I actually tend to give them a, a chair that spins, uh, though encouraging them not to spin out of, um, you know, sort of being a little bit scared about it all. Um, but I, I suggest always we're going to do what I call arcing, which is, you know, you, you do, you already look, I mean, you can see me now, I look there. If I straight to camera, I'm as wide as I'm going to be. And, in fact, it probably looks like, you know, my police file photo. <laughs> it's not very good. So, you know, you could spin the other way. Um, but also know your light. Wherever your main light's coming from, don't shy away with your face because then you're just in shadow. So it's, um, yeah, give a slight sort of tilt or sideways to the camera. Find your main light. Aim, aim your face to the light and then eyes back to the camera. And that's... That's a good starting point. And then it's just a matter of like, well, which side are you going to look best? Few people actually work both ways, not everyone, um, but we've all generally got a, a better side. So it's up to the photographer also to find that. But if you know it, don't even offer the other side. Always just offer the best, you know, your best side. That's it. And that's the starting point. <laughs> I was going to say, I, what I find, I get confused on what side I'm looking at because it's the opposite. So ah. when I look at the camera, I'm going, oh, yeah, I think it's that side. But, you know, even though for looks-wise, I get confused. Do you know what I mean? Of course, we all look in the mirror and we see ourselves completely different. And that's actually probably the basis of why we don't feel comfortable in front of a camera because what we see in our mind is completely different to everyone else. So... The point is you need to see yourself in a photograph to know which side is the better side or just be that little bit cluey and turn it around in your brain, which is good for the brain, um, and and give the side you know. So, yeah. And in the past when I photograph uh, using uh, film cameras and the Hasselblad, like the 120, it actually shot back to front. So even on the shoot, I actually had to turn things around in my mind. So we all have to do it. Um, it's just one of those little things that it's, yeah. How's video, because you, you're working with um, with pork chop and, and people like that. So you're, you know, you're in uh, with uh, a business partner and you're looking at doing feature films and behind the scenes stuff. And do you think that you're going to step more and more opportunities are opening up for you since video? So do you see yourself taking more of a video angle soon? I, pro I guess I probably already have um, we initially in the stages of making music videos because it's still with music and I quite like that. And the creative canvas that you have on a music video is definitely different than, say, the corporate um, clip because it's all about art and things. So... And it's still of that visual content, which I really enjoy. But having said that, I've had opportunities to film interviews with people. Even this week, I have to uh, quote on a job that uh, I'm not only doing the headshots for um, some women, a women-based company on the Central Coast, but they've asked me to do some interviews of the main um, person who runs the company. So, and that may be an ongoing little situation quite similar to what you're teaching all the people that you're talking to. It's whatever business it is, she's deciding, like, let's let's do the um, the video. She just doesn't have time to do it. So she's and and I'm coming in on on a way of like providing still images. So I can now offer her, well I can set up a, a lovely interview scenario. We can actually create a scene where every time you do it, that's the way you're going to do it. Um, to eventually I would like to think that she would probably just have one of her staff members come in and press the button, set it up. We've all, we've worked it out what it is, set it up, and, and they can do it themselves. Um, it's def it's definitely open doors. I can be a stills person. I can be a video pe person. I still strongly believe uh, it's very difficult to do two at the one time. Um, I have done it. I've just done it on a feature film called Last Cab to Darwin. I was the stills photographer. I also shot behind the scenes and I interviewed all the actors um, but I just had to very carefully plan my days where I would do one or the other and I fortunately I was my own little team so I, it was up to me on how to do it um, and the company making the film is someone I work closely with so they had full confidence in me that I could do it sound is the big difference yes and, and <laughs>
when I look out there at people's videos and people's images, that's the biggest thing that I see is they don't know how to make a quality image. What's three things that you can think of in your wisdom that you could share with somebody when they're looking through the camera to make mm -hmm. quality? Sure. The first, ultimately the first thing, no matter whether you're taking a photo or doing a video, it's all about light. Light is your, it's, it, light is everything um, and once you get the handle of light and how you want to light something or use that beautiful natural light however you're going to approach what is in your frame it actually then automatically spills to composition so that would be my next main thing to talk about and to have people to really investigate if you're not even sure if you just think oh well I'll just put someone say in the middle here like you know yes it kind of works but I'm purposely sitting on this side here today because perhaps you Rachel might want to use this piece of footage and on this gap or if you're making your own video in this gap you can drop in text or you can drop in little images of something else or it's just but it also is the rule of thirds if you look at if you break down the frame that you're looking at me right now and it's just much more pleasing to the eye there's composition is an amazing thing um, and it really does help define those people who are good photographers or videographers and those who are not and the third would be um consistency consistency in service and quality um in terms of a good video i would definitely encourage you to buy a, a good tripod you sure you can hand hold things um but especially if you're making your own video or you're very new at it the point i think I think you really need to keep your image stable until you're actually really comfortable with all the elements that you're learning about the the whole um, art form and a tripod will give you that freedom to to frame things move things around or if you're the person even behind the camera you can sort of drop come in and i can sort of fix your hair up or fix things in put move a little prop the moment you walk away with your camera you come back and you've lost your framing so whatever you've just changed means nothing um, um, so a good tripod is, uh, I think, for video, essential. And then you can move on to handhold when you're comfortable and you know actually how to handhold because there's a whole skill in, in that as well. Have you got any other wisdom that you could share with somebody that's, that's making their own videos, that wants to do stuff for their business and really stand out? Anything else you can think of? Can. it's the the probably the next biggest thing is that you to need to remember that you're it's a team effort um even if you take photos it's a team effort it's it's you behind the camera and the person you're photographing but with the video there's more than likely that team has expanded and like any kind of team that you work in you really need to have that down you really need it's it's you as the director um are in the great position of choosing what team you want around you anyway and sometimes you might even choose someone because they make you and the subject feel better uh, over the person that might have a better skill at maybe it's makeup or hair or lights or, or anything. Um, you, you've you got to choose your team well. But also within and then like anything within that teamwork, it's very clear communication about how things are going to work, what you're going to do, um, being able to give everyone a voice but choosing to um, be the director and if at, if at any point um, there needs a time, to, a decision needs to be made and not, everyone's not sure, you will make that decision on everyone's part because it's you, uh, there's a clarity of, of um, thought about what you need to get. So team is, um, yeah, it's a simple, it seems like a simple thing, but um, your team is everything. And if you have a great team around you, you'll number one, have a great time, but you'll also get great results. And if, if people want to get in touch with Wendy or if they want to Wendy to photograph them or uh, to, to interview or to do any filming or to do one of your workshops, uh, what's your website? It's okay. Um, my name, wendymcdougall.com.au. Uh, you'll be able to see samples of my photography and a few videos on there, but there's, importantly there's contact details. Absolutely. And, um, and I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge because, you know, I love what you do. You're so amazing to work with and your professionalism and your skills and you're so humble at what you do because you have done incredible stuff and the exhibitions you've had and, 
you know, you've really gone out there. So I really appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing your wisdom. Well, as a last comment, I guess the final thing I'd always say is life is, you know, not really that long. So even if you're actually working, make your shoots, make whatever you do a lot of fun for yourself and for everyone and you'll enjoy it. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be tense. It doesn't have to be, you know, a chore. Make it fun. That's, that's what I do. I like to make it fun. So thank you, Wendy, so much for joining us today on the Women's Video Revolution. If you want to see more videos on the Women's Video Revolution, make sure that you come on our, come by on our YouTube channel at Girl Director TV. Or also you can join us on our website, which is girldirector.tv, or our Facebook page, which is Girl Director. So make sure that you, you stop in there. We've got lots of tips and tricks to help you to get out there and video, make a difference with your life, your client's life, and the world, because you can now. Video is amazing. And when you start embracing it in your business, you will start to see massive shifts. So learn as much as you can. Get in touch with us if you want more information, and I'll see you next time. I wanted to share with you a little behind the scenes on what actually happened behind the making of this video. Because you know what? There is always a story behind the video that you make. There's always some stress or some kind of tense stuff going on or the computer doesn't work or some kind of technology is not working properly. So I wanted to just share with you the story behind this video that you just watched. So it all started with me contacting Wendy and sending her some questions on on what I wanted to speak to her about and share with you and we we recorded it <laughs> and then what happened was with technology the way it is the picture started to play up and the most important thing when you're making videos is to create and, and record good sound because at the end of the day if you have really good sound it means that you can put pictures to that sound so what I was finding during the interview and I was going, oh my God, I can't believe that Wendy's images and I can't, you know, the, her face is not measuring up with her voice. They were completely different. So how is that going to help the audience to get what she's trying to say? But then I thought, okay, thank God I've recorded a backup. I've got her sound recorded. So now what I'm going to do to edit the interview for you guys is I'm actually going to make it look pretty, put lots of really nice pictures in there, but I've got a really good sound. So that's why sound is equally important. And that's what happens on the other side of a video. If I hadn't have told you that, you'd just be watching the video going, oh cool, nice images, great video. But now I've told you the story behind the video, it makes it just that little bit more interesting. Okay, see you next time.